we are back. We were we had food. Okay, yes. we had nasi I'm lemak. I'm hungry now. Right, never mind. Nasi lemak after this, right? Okay, now before we have our nasi lemak, we also have to announce uh, spirit of rugby. Okay, how do you attain uh, obtain tickets? Basically, call two two eight seven two two seven eight. That's two two eight seven two two seven eight or go to www.spiritofrugbychallenge.com. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, well, that is where you can actually go do your research and also get your tickets. It's going to be quite exciting. Mm-hmm. Klana Jaya Stadium on the 12th of June, 2010. 12th of June, yes. Uh, the website again is www.spiritofrugbychallenge.com. Yeah. And uh, you can get more information from that website. And of course, we are moving on to something that's uh, close to... The heart. <laughs> According to Dr. George Lee, he says... The heart, but it's a different area. Anatomy altogether. <laughs> but he says it's a matter of a broken heart. So let's find out what he's trying to tell us. Yes, Dr. George Lee, in our midst, good morning. Yeah, doctor. good morning. Yes. Good what morning. an exciting day. Exciting. Football, rugby, yeah. you know, ED. international yeah. stars. And then you end it with ED. Of course. <laughs> it's, the, it's the climax of the show. It's like bringing, <laughs> no everyone, bringing <laughs> everyone on a testosterone high and then go like, Pam, wow. ED. Well, actually, it's about health. Health, okay, right? Okay. Right. Of course, you know, e, um, ED is a sign of broken heart. You know, you can <laughs> interpret it many ways. But what I'm trying to say is that, of course, ED is um, is something that it's a condition that affects many men in Malaysia. And in fact, there's recent uh, recently a study done by Asia Pacific. Uh, sexual health and overall wellness actually shows that below 40 you get about 26% of men experience ED oh. to some degree and that's, that's quite alarming 40. that's right, right. You know? and then above 40 of course we all know that with age certain performance might be deficient and then that's true and then that can go up as high as 48% mm-hmm. and that is a reflection and, and it mirrors what the western country shows mm-hmm. and in fact this is quite alarming in a way that mm-hmm. you know if you look at this Said, Malaysian yes. men, you know, like it, these are several grades of um, ED. If you look at grade four, actually, is normal. Okay. But anything that is below grade four actually is ED. Okay. So one is poor, two actually is uh, you know intermediate, mm-hmm. and then three is suboptimal, and four is good. So if you look at that, then you will realize that about 48% of Malaysian men above age of 40 may experience this. Mm-hmm. And why it is worrying? Because you know a lot of people say, ah, you know, after age of 40, you know, sex may not be um, something that's important anymore. Right. However, it is a sign that something else has gone wrong, mm. because the vessels that supply that part of the organ is a lot smaller. So. In, uh, whenever the vessels itself start having problems, it means that the rest of your body, the other organs, might actually have problems. So, you know, our lifestyle that actually have increasing diabetes patients, right. high blood pressure, high cholesterol, mm. and these are the people who actually may act, uh, have first sign of something that has gone wrong. Mm. So, if you look at this, is the Asia Pacific Sexual Health and uh, Overall Wellness Study. Men and women. It showed that yeah, men and women. This is men's perception that actually. 45% in the whole Asia Pacific region of men suffers from ED and it's mirrored by women's perception as well Mo- mm-hmm. women also uh, rated about 48% so across Asia Pacific it's similar mm-hmm. that this is a true problems right. and so as the show like this number mm-hmm. one it works well because it breaks down taboo to yes. talk about yes. you yes. know um, this is a sexual health problem exactly number two it highlights something else is even more uh, important which is is an early sign of a broken heart <laughs> because the heart itself <laughs> It's going to suffer because yeah, if the vessel true. in the other organ yeah. is suffering with blockage, mm-hmm. with nerve problems, with um, diabetes, high cholesterol, then the real heart yes. is had an early sign of suffering. Ah, so, so it's actually li- literally. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's an early sign of broken heart. Right. Ah, that's what you meant. Yeah. Mm. So and also meth- metaphorically, it also can be a broken heart because. For a lot of men who suffers from ED, it can also mean a broken relationship. Right. right. Yeah. Because a lot of men probably have to suffer in silence. Yeah. Because it's an ego problem. Mm. You know, uh, people worry about talking about it, and then and this might actually cause a distance, a barrier between a loving relationship. Right. And that is quite worrying because these days and age, there are yeah. many things that we can do. Right. Mm. Good. Tell us about the remedies then yeah. to uh, well um, allay the fears, especially. Yeah. 
because a lot of or men... prevention, perhaps. Right. I'm yeah. sure a lot of men are actually, like you said, apart from the ego thing, they're also terrified. Absolutely. They're terrified. Men are very sensitive. Very <laughs> terrified. That's right. Understand. <laughs> so, yes, it's true. So, there are two topics here. Um, you know, Zamil is yes. absolutely right. It's prevention. Prevention is key in here. And then treatment is the second part. Prevention is important. We know that what causes ED are the same thing that causes the first killer in Malaysia, such as strokes, heart mm. attacks. And then those are the things such as smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes. high cholesterol and diabetes. Mm. And these are the main killers of um, heart conditions. So the way to do it is obviously uh, watch what you eat and then live a health, healthy lifestyle. Stop smoking, stop uh, drinking um, or reduce on the alcohol and have a balanced nutrition, a balanced right. diet mm -hmm. and exercise, exercise, exercise. Mm. And then that will be the key to have a good lifestyle and prevention of erectile dysfunction. Mm. And coming to the treatment, treatment. Yeah. right, of course, for those people who actually had suffered from the condition, it might be a little bit too late. However, nothing is ever too late. There are studies to show that if you live a healthier lifestyle and things can continue to improve, yeah. so they may be reversal because the damage of the blood vessels can continue to improve whenever you live a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. So guys out there, don't be despair. Don't because fret. There are, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So go back, exercise more and eat healthier lifestyle. Uh, have a healthier lifestyle yeah. and that may reverse the erectile dysfunction. Well, Doctor, since we are talking about football and rugby today, all about sports, do athletes actually suffer ED? Well, Will they, you know, somehow suffer ED? Yes, there are other causes yeah. of ED apart from unhealthy lifestyles. Okay. Uh, that includes medication. So certain people may take certain type of medications, like for example, Atenolol. Mm. This is a drug that actually may cause ED. Some cancer may result in ED, for example, mm. prostate cancer and also treatment of prostate cancer. So right. a healthy athlete may suffer from ED from, uh, for other reasons. And of course, there is the psychological cause of ED, mm. you know, and that may be related to performance anxiety. Mm. So therefore, go and see a doctor because the doctor can establish what is the uh, real cause of ED and help you accordingly. Great. Now coming back to remedies, Dr. George, um, curiously, are there any pills or medication to be taken, like you said, to uh, alleviate the, the, the symptoms or, or to help uh, people on the stage of recovery? Absolutely. And in fact, the, the blue pill, the famous blue pill has been around for about 10 years, Ten years yeah. that's right. And then, and then there are many other pills that's available and these pills actually help to open up the blood vessels and then that will solve a lot of problems. And after 10 years, we know that they are safe, but they need to be uh, taken under the guidance of a doctor and that's very important. And also, apart from that, um, the drugs itself may work in 80% of men. For those men who it doesn't work, there are other ways such as uh, medications through injections and also several devices that may be used in order to help men. So they need to be tailored. So the best thing to do is actually see men and women together, mm. the couples together and see how we can actually prevent that. Really? And from your observation, Doctor, how young a Malaysian could suffer from ED? Um, well, a second old ED can happen in younger age, probably yeah. about 20s. Mm -hmm. And then um, for men who suffers younger, they may, be, uh, they may actually be due to psychological reasons. Right. And therefore, um, you know, it is true, it can happen in younger age group. So uh, seeing a doctor to check out this might not be a hormonal cause or any other psychological uh, uh, etiology will be very important. Great. And lastly, Dr. George, maybe in terms of counselling, I know men, when they hear counselling, maybe, yeah, no, maybe not for me, yeah. right? But uh, do you actually encourage or prescribe counselling, especially for couples? Because like you said, it could affect uh, their relationships yeah. and mm -hmm. it could be quite serious. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, counselling is um, it's, it's something that I don't do. And then um, counselling actually is important because in relationship, because... Um, Sexual health is a couple's problem. Mm -hmm. 
and counseling obviously is important whenever um, this affects the relationship because after you re um, rectify the erectile dysfunction there is that mending of a relationship that's important mm. and I am somebody who is not qualified counsellors and however what we need is a doctor or healthcare profession who actually listen to patient and trying to see how to bring the two broken hearts together again mm. and that's the most important part right. well guys we hope that you have been uh, really informed from this uh, topics that we have discussed today uh, let's take a look in the uh, polling results let's just in and see what you have voted for Right. Before so. we uh, hear uh, our last word from Dr. George Lee, that yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. So, who do you think will be in the World ah. Cup 2010 finals? 50% of you has uh, voted for Holland. Brazil. Brazil. Sorry. Brazil. <laughs> oh, goodness. 20% goes to Spain and Spain, uh, Holland goes to 30%. Holland yes. was my choice. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? No, this is too obvious. It has to be underdogs like, you know, well, Australia or something we'll, like that. Well, we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah, okay, no. We have got a whole month. Okay, For me, it has to be England. England. Oh, England. Oh, EPL. England. Oh. But anyway, um, well, Dr. George Lee, before we go off air and talk about World Cup, Oh, okay. Any last words for men out there about ED? Or okay. women out there about ED? Well, sports. You know, last words, since we're on the spirit okay. of rugby, spirits of workout, why don't you take this opportunity and join the nation and live a healthy lifestyle yeah. and stop yourself from getting problems like ED? Thank <laughs> you right. so much. To mend your broken heart. Dr. George. <laughs> thank, you so thank you right. so much. Right, thank you so much. Well, and Angelina and Zamil signing off for the day. We wish you a pleasant day ahead and stay tuned for the World Cup opening. 2010! Tomorrow. Enjoy! Yeah.